Hello, my name is Jan Mattes. I'm Chief Product Manager for Marketing in SAP Business by Design. And I'm now going to show you a demo in which I create a marketing campaign and then you measure the success of that campaign in dollars of the created follow-up sales. So let me right away go into the system um, to give you an understanding how this works. What I have opened up here is um, a sales order volume report. This is basically an analysis of all my customers and the revenues they made in the last four months. So I boiled it down to all the customers in, uh, which made revenue in uh, September, August, July and June. And um, as uh, they are the most prominent ones and the ones with the biggest amounts, I want to create a campaign for them. So let me now show the list um, of those customers in a, a table view. And what I could do now is simply, yes, this is exactly the customers I want to address. I click here and then I can create directly out of that report um, a list, uh, which is then my target group for my campaign. So what I get now is a new target group. I can give it a name, uh, of course, add some, some more descriptions. And um, underneath, you see then in detail all the customers which have been added to the target groups directly from that report. Um, you see in the table as well, uh, which of them gave me the contact permission. You see some of them have allowed the, that, that I contact them. Some uh, I need to still check, so probably I need to remove them. And there are even customers which didn't give me any marketing consent, so I should rather not contact them. In addition, I might want to check if um, the uh, communication medium I want to use, in this case the email, uh, is really available. And that's why I simply check here the addressability. And here in the results that you see that uh, some of the customers did not have any uh, email address maintained or that they disallowed uh, the uh, contact and that's why they marked here as red. So what I could also do is of course to add more customers. I can manually add or select any customer but I can also use here let's say advanced filtering and, and parameters. So let's say I want to really um, only address the customers which gave me the marketing permissions and um, I might want to add maybe more criteria here and now let's uh, go and uh, let's um, give the result set of all customers which gave me marketing permissions and as I have already here a list um, I would like to simply uh, do an intersect of all the customers below which I have selected from the report and um, remove the ones which are not part of the report so what I do is now I intersect and then um, I get um, then the final result list. So this is done. Uh, I boiled the list down to five members. Well, and then um, I return to my target group. So this is, this is basically it. Of course, I could be adding way more of the customers. So what I need to do now is to save my target group. And after that, I could then um, directly create a campaign out of that. I will do that. So I will create here a new campaign using the newly created target group from the sales order volume report. So first of all, let me give that campaign a name. I will select um, the campaign type I want to support. It shall be a direct email campaign. Um, I give it a start date and I want the campaign to be running until end of the year. Um, this will be a campaign which will give customer specific discounts. That's why I want to uh, keep the campaign uh, running until the end of the year. So the discount shall be given until uh, 31st of December. Um, the target group is already assigned. So um, I have here the sender address here for my contact. Let's uh, change it uh, for another address. Copy that to get also the reply to address. It could be also, of course, um, a different address. And what I would do now is that I want to um, add here not only one email template, one email uh, that I want to be sending out. Uh, I have multiple contacts which are coming from different countries. So that's why I want to add here um, 
um, multiple uh, language specific versions. And how could I do that? Well, I go here into the email templates section of the campaign and you see I could now add here a row for my first language and I would now select um, an email template and select here the English one. So this shall be an invitation to uh, a retail event. event. And I want to make the English version of my email template responsive. So let me now add um, also the German version. And add now also the English email template. So that's um, basically it. I could of course add way more languages um, I will not do that. So I'm almost um, done now with the campaign. I could now fire, let's say, um, a test mailing just to make sure that the email template is right. So I want to send that test mail uh, to myself. And, uh, of course, I want to then also check that um, I have really uh, a responsive email template, which really looks good on um, also on mobile devices. I check here uh, a test account just to make sure that the um, uh, placeholders in the email template, which uh, are used uh, to have a personalized name and also other personalized data, uh, really work out. So that's why I now send that test mail to myself. And um, yeah, maybe in the meantime, I can explain you a bit how um, such a, a mail template is usually being created. So let me open that uh, mail template in a web browser. So this is um, the email template I will be sending. It's um, built in HTML5 using any kind of uh, email editor, let's say Dreamweaver or any kind of best of breed um, email and HTML editors. And um, you have embedded here pictures and uh, you find in that email template also such kind of placeholder. So you see dear and then there is the placeholder that will be then um, replaced by the name of each person which will be receiving the name. And also, um, let's say response code IDs might be adding, uh, added here just to inform the customer that he, that he has been included into a personal discount campaign. And if he then mentions that response code, uh, he could then um, also create directly a, a sales order, which will give him a discount. So um, let me check here if the email uh, just arrived. We have the first email, which just approached me. Uh, you see, this is the email address I sent uh, as reply to address and sender email address. And this is the responsive email template. And now it's displayed here in Outlook. And um, you've seen that the placeholder has been replaced by the name of the contact and the, the customer. And um, yeah, um, this is a, as this is a nice responsive email template, it will really be looking nice also on any kind of device. Um, just took here a screenshot on my iPhone just uh, to give you an impression how that will be looking and send that to me. So this is a screenshot I took from my iPhone you see that's the very same email with the very same um, uh, placeholder. Uh, but in this case, it was the German email, which I uh, screenshotted. So, so much for um, sending and testing uh, the email campaign. So next step is now that I want to add response options to my campaign. And uh, that is also fairly easy. I go to the response options tab and what I could add now is um, a list of uh, attributes which will be used to classify the responses of the customer. So I might be having a positive re reaction by a customer and maybe um, that shall be the default. So every new activity which will be uploaded and will be linked to the campaign um, will be treated as positive. Uh, as default, unless I really manually assign, let's say that it shall be uh, a neutral or uh, that shall, it shall be uh, something like a negative response. 
So what you see here is basically a campaign I already, already prepared and I clicked here on the response details tab and there you find a, a summary of the results coming from the campaign. It's uh, counting basically the number of activities, leads, opportunities, quotes and also the sales orders which have been created as a response to this campaign and uh, you see here underneath uh, all the emails, uh, leads, opportunities that have been created for the various accounts. And most interesting is here, if I click here, let's say on such a sales order, um, then uh, you can also see how the assignment for um, a campaign works. You see here in the overview of the sales order that it has been linked to that uh, demo event September invitation. And if I now go to view all and uh, check on the pricing of that sales order, then you can recognize that um, uh, due to the campaign and the assignment of the campaign, the customer got also a 4% discount. Um, uh, so this is um, uh, really then driving sales probably a lot. You can create a campaign specific discount list um, and assign it to all to one or many of the campaigns. And then later on, customers can benefit from that campaign specific discounts. So in a nutshell, what you have seen is basically how um, we can create and directly execute multi-language and responsive email campaigns and most significant um, track also uh, the success and the responses of the campaign. And uh, that gives me, uh, Ben Baby, uh, the final word in showing you the campaign success report. So this is um, basically an analysis, a campaign report, which is out of the box available. And there I uh, filtered for um, the most recent campaigns and I depicted it as a bubble chart. And it's basically the number of emails that have been created um, and uh, the sales order volume that has been created by such a campaign. I see then basically, well, this is a campaign which has the highest sales order volume. Um, it, had an, it had nine uh, emails uh, and nine contacts that have been contacted. Here is it's 10, but the sales order volume was low below. So um, this is basically then um, a very uh, helpful insight, uh, which really helps you to optimize your marketing campaigns in a powerful ma manner. I hope you liked what you have seen and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks a lot.